悲しい顔はやめてよ君の最後は涙じゃないよずっと苦しく背負ってくんだ出口見えない感情迷路に The way he was sort of like Negi's libido because he could say things that Negi could never say and I, I, I like that a lot It mirrors my own life It's weird Um Are you saying you're Greg's Lapita? Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that busy. Yes. I've asked this question at a number of conventions, both anime and otherwise, and it's very interesting the answers that uh, people come up with sometimes, so I'll ask you here. Have you ever had to talk to yourself? In other words, gotten to. My glasses is half full. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. And, and you know, I think, actually, I think the, the person who could really best answer that question, uh, for me, would be Chris Abbott, only because he's so many characters in DBC <laughs> Kai that he's done that. He's fought himself, and won, and lost. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have done that. It, it's, it's really surreal to, to talk to you. I mean, it's a narcissist's dream, which is every performer's uh, well, quality. I, I heard one, one comment one time that the voice actor was responding to the conversation, and he was thinking to himself, boy, this guy is really lousy. Oh. And then he realized it was himself. Oh. That's awesome. I, don't, I don't have a story like that. <laughs> That's so awesome. No. That's the subtext. Too. I've had to do, I've had to do that too. And it's, it's hard because, um, I mean, usually we'll go through, like if you have more than one character, you'll go through and record one whole character and then you'll go back and record that. But um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to have to talk to yourself because you want to make sure it sounds like two different people. That's the big one, yeah. Uh, not the same person. Talking Unless you're playing twins. <laughs> like Michael Solsa did in uh, I have done that too. Zubaso to, to this day, I still think one of the greatest examples of voice acting, even though it involved a lot of other stuff, was, uh, oh God, I just flipped on his name. Um, Gollum. Oh, right. Oh, in yeah, Circus. Yeah. Yeah. Circus, Circus. And Andy, Circus. Circus. Yeah. The circus. conversation between Gollum and Smeagol, I mean, that had to be nuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would hope that they could let him record it one at a time, right? No. no? I mean, it was a back and forth conversation with two different cameras. One camera filming this way, one this way. Wow. I, I looked at the background materials with the movie. Wow. Did he do the physicality? Like, did he do the physical stuff? They did mocap on him too. Like they did for uh, Sam in the Biz, the mocap is the motion cap. <laughs> Uh, uh, King Kong. He was King Kong too, which is weird. I mean, he, he was the motion, he was the motion capture King Kong the whole time. Really? Yeah. So he's also not only is he a skilled voice actor, but he's also got this great pantomime uh, stuff too. So it's pretty also, pretty awesome. I was gonna say he also did a cameo on one of the ship things uh, when they're going to the island. Oh really? Oh, was he on a, was he a sailor on the uh, ship? Someone on the ship. I don't know what the. Was. That's gotta be, I guess it's Peter Jackson's good luck charm. Like, he used them a lot, which I love. I love when they reuse actors like that, so that's cool. I think it's awesome that he went from like little bitty dude to giant ape. <laughs> <laughs> the old Napoleon complex. Yeah, uh, yeah oh, every. You're better, you're better at picking than I am. I'm gonna go front row on this one. Hello. 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 I have a question for Monica. Yeah. What's your favorite part about working in Black Butler? Uh, my character? <laughs> uh, Maylin is awesome. I love his cosplay, by the way. Uh, Maitland is probably one of my favorite characters I've ever gotten to voice because not only is she uh, British, so I got to do like a really crazy Cockney, like, you know, uh, accent, which is awesome, but I also got to do like the craziest voice I have ever done in the history of voices. Really? That's yeah. a lot. Quite a few. I've done a lot, but it's pretty so, crazy. Like, Hello, Governor. Oh, I'm British. He's talking like that. He's <laughs> talking like this. He talks like this. <laughs> so everything is like, yeah, it's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> uh, it's a great show, though. If any of you haven't seen Black Butler, you should check it out. Woo! Second row represent. <laughs> yeah. Here, get some. I said that up before. Yes? Um, this is, maybe it's not okay for me to say this, but... Cover um, your ears, everybody. <laughs> well, no, it's not Are you about to drop an F-bomb? What? <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know. What I, I'm just trying to no, point. Um, Waiting for Spike. Could I just <laughs> ask a strange question of Monica Real? Sure. Well, hold on. Is this okay with you? Yeah. I'm our <laughs> gatekeeper. It's weird. Not really. Could you say gal? Oh, totally. Are you ready? Gal. <laughs> 
<laughs> My voice has been warmed up, obviously. Uh, <laughs> ow. Ow. It's, it's creepier than ever. Oh, yes? That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love her. She's awesome. Uh, I was going to say, I overheard about the Subasa OVAs. How is it to jump from Sakura after being like the sweet, innocent girl to having to go out on an adventure on her own? What was that like? It was fantastic, and I was really excited when I got those guns. You can it's ask okay. Chris. Yeah, and I was like, I have guns! I'm not spoiling anything for you guys, because it's literally like two frames. She gets like, I got guns! And they're gone! Oh. <laughs> really, you die at the end. I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I have no idea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, sorry. <laughs> coming to the stage is the stage. Mister Spike. You just hit the stage. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Bubble. Oh, I will tell you guys, since that came up, I know that I, at a lot of conventions, people are angry because the show's been edited, Kai's been edited on Nicktoons and CW. I will tell you, if you buy the discs, it's unedited. Like, if you buy the discs, there are curse words, and people actually die, and, and things happen. The cursing? The The cursing stuff. And that's the thing is that, like, we were even surprised when we started at W and Kai, like, because they would come back with pickups, like, Nicktoons would be like, like, I called a planet, I called Namek a, a, a stupid planet at one point, and they were like, oh, you can't call uh, any planet stupid, because that's not green. Do you believe that? <laughs> 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 Mr. Popo angry. I was like, I didn't say I was going to litter, I said it was stupid, but whatever. And then CW's even, even crazier. Ask Blue Popo, he knows. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I just want to throw that out there. If you guys want to see the unedited version, definitely pick up the DVD. <laughs> he is I'm not working with that one. <laughs> Yes? Uh, for Monica. Yes. Exactly. Well, How is it to be as Konica in Nagma? That was fun. Um, I like Konica. She's cool. She's got rollerblades. She's kinda she's kinda cute but snarky. But I also liked getting to uh, that was the show where I got to talk to myself. So playing Cosme and playing Totsky and, and having to talk to myself. That was kinda fun too. It's a little weird. It's a little weird, but it was fun. It was a good show. And I liked the second season and all the chupacabra business. I don't know why I liked the chupacabra business. Chupatees. <laughs> it's fun to say. It's fun to say. It means goat sucker. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a question. Actually, I have two ones really quick. I don't know if you're using the... Did you direct or assist direct for Negima? Who, me? Yeah. I directed uh, a lot of season one. A lot of season yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know because I, I haven't heard anything about any of the new uh, OAVs or that. So they haven't said anything if they're getting picked up or not. I didn't know. That, by the way, is not the reason I was cast as Camel. I'll make that clear. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're saying? Sorry. <laughs> Disclaimer. Quick question is I didn't know if that's something you can talk about if, if the, the OAVs, the ones that are out in Japan, if they're even considered oh, coming to Funimation. <laughs> That's my best answer. Okay, and then that, that other question real quick is, for it, I've watched both the, you know, the English version and the Japanese version on the DVDs. How do you guys go through the process, like, of, like, you know, switching the lines? Like, how do you determine, okay, well, we want to switch this line to this, we want to know, we're going to switch this line to this. How do you guys, how, like, what's the process to that? I'm actually having a panel on Sunday where I'm going to talk about ADR script adaptation and I will walk you through all the steps from translation to the actual dub script. It's a, it's a long process, but if you have anything to add to that, go for it. Only that Monica is not kidding. She really does have that panel. It's I really do great. have that panel. Um, well, it's funny, you'll, you'll see that I believe that, that season two, which is really a reta uh, retelling, uh, is to me even more, it's even more broader, or is that broader? Uh, it, like, it, it takes a lot of liberties, even more so I think the first season did. Uh, to its benefit, I mean, it was really funny. But, um, but yeah, that is definitely a writing question, and one that, uh, stay tuned, if you're here, are you here till Sunday? All right, there's one. Yes. I'll be there, hopefully. <laughs> um, any further questions or chair throwing? Yes. Do you have any funny stories when working in the sound booth? No, we cry a lot. I do a lot of it on my cutter. I cry a lot. <laughs> um, it's like a little, well, a little girly boy who saves the world in a biomechanical robot. <laughs> a lot of crying. <laughs> do you ever play anything other than like little girly men? Yes. <laughs> awesome I mean, and I'm, springing. Awesome and springing. Thank you. Thank you. See? Oh, springing? I forgot about springing. Oh, wow, that's old school. Way to go, dude. <laughs> I sounded like a dish yeah. world of Warcraft. Thank you. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> you can say the same thing about me, so it's okay. <laughs> I just want to Things got weird, as, as predicted. Uh, any funny stories from. Oh, yeah, there's a million. Ten minutes in. Bam! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Mr. Pope. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a million. Uh, 
gosh. So people have passed out. Well, I don't know if I'm giving too much away. Uh, <laughs> but maybe on some other panel I'm doing. Um, say what? No, no, no. We actually passed out too, yeah. So did Amanda did. So did Amanda did. So did Amanda did. I talked for a living. People have passed out. Uh, <laughs> um, people have fallen. People have disrobed. People. <laughs> Thanks, second row. <laughs> um, people. People have. I mean, so yeah, a lot of a lot of funky stuff is happening. Flatulence. And that's just up here. I, I have, I have a, uh, a panel tonight, What Happens at the Con Stays at the Con, and one of the stories in the book is about so, one of these big stories, things that happen in, in the booth, actually. <laughs> I've determined this panel is actually nothing but a preview of other panels. <laughs> it really is. We decided to tell you nothing, apparently. It, we're waking up. So. Yeah. There's a question. Yeah. Along the same lines, okay, you're talking about people who maybe get you know very emotionally involved in the character and trying to get that out through their voice and everything. What do you do if your character is about to die and like has to scream or you know? Always do. You know, I mean, how do you get into that emotional uh, state of mind that okay, I'm dead. Well, that is, I, and I, I awesome. I'll do the best. Um, that is rough, and in fact, I there's a new we have a new uh, engineer, sound engineer, Ocatron, and that we've been working on Kai with, and so there's a lot of you know emotions and stuff. And one minute you'll be crying, and the next minute you're yelling, and he's like, "How do you guys do that? Like, how do you go from like I'm Monica in the booth talking to like crying your eyes out?" And I, I don't know. <laughs> we're insane. Um, <laughs> experience you have acting the easier it is to just kind of switch it on and off like when you're starting out you really have to like think about the emotions and really pull it up and but once you've got it like I could probably cry at the drop of a hat I'm not gonna do it now because my mascara would run but I mean like you know, you're I do. You <laughs> right what do you guys do you do anything are you method do you prepare in any way or something like that, or do you just do it? The first thing I do before I find out the character's about to die is cash all my checks. Because <laughs> I don't want a bouncy bouncy, not, not, not these days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good plan. Solid plan. And, uh, um, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's awful, because, uh, particularly a character that you've had, uh, that you've been with, that sounds terrible, for multiple episodes, that, to then say, hey, what am I doing today? You're dying. Uh, and, and sometimes it's not a violent death. Meaning it's not necessarily a screamy, a screaming death, but uh, sometimes, <laughs> but sometimes it is. Of course, you know, a truck. <laughs> sometimes you get hit randomly by a truck in the future. But um, but if it's a screaming thing, I mean, I, I call that DBZ training. I mean, I remember '98, '99 era DBZ. All we did was come in and scream. Like I'm surprised I don't have nodes right now from all the screaming. <laughs> so now it's like if you have to scream one day to die, it's like ah, I did that for days on a mountaintop, and nothing <laughs> happened for five, five episodes, and then something <laughs> happened. But um, that was the other see. But um, yeah, not Kai. It's totally streamlined now. But uh, yeah, I. And really, there's nothing you can do as far as um, when you hear people screaming a lot. Which, by the way, is it was that's why a lot of people passed out for just lack of oxygen, screaming all day. Uh, <laughs> there's really no way to hide that or get around it. At the end of the day, you have to be. I mean, you're screaming, and there's no. You can drink all the hot tea in the world, but eventually, it's just you and a mic and just screaming over and over. Although there are some tricks you can do, like you can scream, ah, stop the tape, take a drink, take a breath. And then if, sometimes the engineer will feed that into, ah, like finish the arc after a break. So those are some things we're able to do now. I know in the days of three-quarter decks, and uh, that did not happen. So it was much more uh, raw and awful. <laughs> we screamed a lot. There was no, and Matt always wanted a better scream. Oh. Over and over and over. Ah, uh, it was close, a little longer, a little shorter, a little more so gurgle at the end, a little more of this, a little more of that. Ah! And Matt Greenfield is a great director and a lot of fun to work mm -hmm. with, but he would like, he would rate your screams too. So like if he didn't feel like it was blood curdling enough or like he, yes. he didn't hear the death. Like he I didn't believe it. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe you're dying. I'm bleeding from the eyes. <laughs> oh, I just wet myself again for you. I mean, oh. He and I spent like, I think I did like 30 takes. 
for one show on a um, on a licking ice cream excerpt. <laughs> Like he's a just, little licking ice cream. He's just enjoying it. He's just being a jerk. <laughs> I love that. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> yeah, screaming. That's the other thing too. Is for every scream you hear, we've already done four or five. So, and, and then it's not even necessarily the last scream that's used, which is also frustrating. You do five screams and you're red faced and you can't talk anymore. And then of course they say, "Well, we're going to use the first one." Burn. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it also depends on the director because some directors want like. I remember working with a director. Did you work with Donald <coughs> Rush? Yeah. He liked screams that were like he didn't want any grit in there, or any emotion. It had to be ah, like it had to be totally clean. Yeah, that's hard. Or he hated yeah. it. And then you work with Matt. He wants like ah, like he just wants it to. And he wanted to in there. Yeah. And so you go to the wrong director and do, or do the wrong scream for the wrong director, and you'd end up screaming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost I almost passed out on the last Ava. There were some, oh, yeah. some big screams on that, and uh, it was a quick bar, and the dude was like, ah! <laughs> 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 and that was good, right? <laughs> he says, <laughs> uh, you've had your hand up for a while. No, you're the one I'm putting it. You, but yeah. you passed, oh, the you're tag the team, okay, you. Um, uh, me and my friends, we've come up with a lot of ideas, storyline ideas, and we're actually wondering between dubbing, which would be easier to dub, more of like stuff like Oron or Fruits Basket, or more of the action type shows, which is easier to work with. You mean like for, for an actor, what's easier to do? Yeah, between like a romantic drama or a comedy or an action series. Well, I think all actors like the challenge of anything given to them. Yeah, they, they regard that as a challenge. I, I think, uh, I mean, I guess, based on what we just talked about, uh, vocally speaking, it would be easier to do the so-called whisper shows. Yes, I like sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the, the quick answer would be, you know, because we like quick questions and answers here, would be um, column A instead of column B, which is, did I just lose myself? Column B is the action stuff, so it's the, it's the romantic and, and smaller things because it's easier to record. But I would say from a production standpoint, the, the big robot stuff's maybe not easier animation-wise, but script-wise, it's a lot harder to get a good story in like the, I love the signs. Uh, wow. The stories, it's a lot harder to write a really good comedy script than it is to write a really intriguing action script. Just look at all the movies that come out. Half of them are crap, but if you put a lot of explosions in it, it's awesome. That's why I'm glad I'm writing this while I'm in high school. There you go. I've got plenty of time. You've got plenty of time. And they're all fun. It just depends on what, and whatever you guys like the most is probably what's best for you to focus on, because you have the most knowledge about that. Yeah. But I'm a sucker for that. I mean, look, I sat down and paid money to watch Transformers 2. It was awful. But, uh, but, but a lot of stuff blew up. So, I, you know, it's a summer movie. I, I breathed my mouth open. I ate popcorn and watched the pretty pictures. So that's all I did for two hours, like a dope. Suspend disbelief. That's what we go there for. I don't want to think. Not in my movies. Sense and sensibility. Ew. What? There's a dress or something. Why would you like a movie? Airs. Because I'm the girl that goes on vacation and goes to the museum and not the beach, so... That's cool. Mm. I'm with that. I want to go somewhere and watch people emote and repress for two hours. Yay! <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, you with the head. <laughs> Actually, it's for all three of you. Uh, has there ever been a line that you almost could not do because you would not stop laughing every time you tried this line? <laughs> <laughs> so many lines. <laughs> yeah. My favorite was Shinji's line after he did his thing uh, over Oscar. So that was just like. Who am I going to see that? What's what? I'm going to say what? <laughs> so, I can't say it here. <laughs> you can stay. Well, there's an 18 up, you can probably say it, right? Giggity, giggity, yeah. Giggity, giggity, goo. Yeah, the other goo. Well, I agree. Yeah, from your lips to God's ears. There's a. Call <laughs> them. Yeah. Let them know. I've been trying. Well, there's a, there's a ton of lines like that. And of course, as a director, also, I mean, I had. Many years where, well, 
not many years. Every day it was a new, where are you? I'm 76 years old. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you hear lines all the time that she's like, I can't believe they're about to say that. And you, you know, it's like, cool, here's one more. And you click the mic off so that you can laugh and they can't hear you laugh. <laughs> and actually, you know what it was? Case closed. Has anyone seen Case Closed? Okay, I love Case Closed, but in that, I always used to tease Jerry Jewell. <laughs> Not because he would say, why didn't I see it before? Which is what he normally says, Jimmy Kudo, but I always loved it when he got tender. That always made me like, Rachel. That always made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> me laugh. Like, so sometimes it's not a line that's actually written funny. Sometimes it's just like, when we're in the middle of, you know, joking around or whatever, and he has to go in there and go, Rachel, I love you. Like, really, Jerry? <laughs> you know the guy, it's even funnier sometimes. But, uh, okay, I mean, uh, and then, Obviously shows like Shin Chan, for example, there's a time, and by the way, the Shin Chan script, if it were printed out into pages, we used uh, digital scripts, but um, they would be like that thick, because for every joke you hear, there's four or five alt options, and sometimes they're as dirty or dirtier, I mean, it, it's, it's director's discretion, but that, that is a very dense script, and there's so many jokes per page that, yeah, it's hilarious. I wish they would like just put out like four different versions of all their stuff. Me too. Um, I had there was a one particular line in Excel Saga that killed me, and it took forever for me to be able to say it. Um, but yeah, and then a lot of it's not even about the lines so much as like when I was living in Houston and going up to Dallas to record, I would record for like twelve hours a day for four or five days in a row, and by the end of that fourth, yeah, I was like a recording machine. At the end of that fourth or fifth day, like everything's funny. Because you've been locked in a box. Yeah, you're slap happy. You're like, I've been locked in a box for four days. Like so an like, animal. Yeah, so you know, I'm working on Tsubasa and it's all dramatic and I've got the giggles for no other reason than I'm in a box. Still. Can I come out now? That's when you start to question, like, what am I doing? <laughs> this is what I do for a living. I get in a box and scream for therapy. Awesome. Words stop making sense. They really do. Huh? Actually, uh, I have a, a, I've started to keep a little catalog of these lines. Uh, and I have a page full of them that I'm going to read at my panel tonight. So come, come see that. Well, sometimes it's not even the lines, it's the director. You work with McFarland. It's, you can't get through half a scene without him saying something completely completely, horribly, awesomely bad, and just naughty as hell. He's a funny, funny guy, and you can't go on half the time. We were supposed to come. Yeah, he had to go, he had to, go to another convention because of, of, I think it was a Summer Wars thing. Summer Wars thing, Because he had a thing he had to do. Oh, my God. Um, but it's funny, I had one of those lines from Shin Chan, actually. Uh, my agency in, in Dallas, they decided to take some clips from anime and put it up so like, you know, people that are hiring me for commercial stuff can see what I do anime-wise. And for some reason they picked from Shin Chan, which I was like, I don't know. They're playing a prank on you. Well, I mean, you know, I'm an adult and I'm, I'm trying to go for, you know, come to so-and-so company where we tell you this, not, you know, the anime stuff. But they thought it'd be fun to put my five-year-old character up there. And, it's a whole thing about, uh, I don't know if any of you saw the episode where she's yelling at Mr. K about breaking her mother's statue and what she's going to do to his testicles. Buy it. That is on my agency's website. Nothing gets you a job like testicles. Just the word alone. Can you imagine? It's like, why'd you guys pick that? Very nice. Right on after he's like, Damn. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of times, you know, voice actors go come uh, go to companies and then leave for a while, and there's a lot of times where, where certain voice actors have to cover vo other voice actors' ca old characters. Do you usually try and, you know, match the person's voice in that instance, or do you try and do your own thing if you have to do it for a few episodes? Or? You mean like voice matching? Yeah. Like well, what, what I, I just mean like. Um, I think like for the special edition of Even Gillian, the director's cut, they, they had to replace a few of the different voice, oh, right. voice actors. So do those back, if you have to do that, do you try and match the voice or do you try and just have your own interpretation of the character? I think they match. I do it. I do that a lot. Um, I was Maya Ibuki in the director's cut and now I'm Pen Pen. <laughs> I made that jump. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that was that was a, the only one that was different because Matt told me not to try to sound like the others because he thought that I sounded more like the original Japanese actress. So he's like, just go for the say, like try to sound like the say. You don't worry about 
the other English actresses. But like working on Dragon Ball Z Kai, you know, I was replacing Tiffany Vollmer, who did all of Dragon Ball Z. And with that, I did, <laughs> I did watch, I watched a lot of her stuff and at least wanted to be in the same tone. I mean, I have such a weird voice, I'm not gonna sound like somebody else anyway, but I tried. What are you doing? I'm putting the, the mic That's away very weird. The... <laughs> There's a whole show down here. What are you doing, Chris? <laughs> it's the weirdest ventriloquist <laughs> act I've ever seen. <laughs> Mr. Popo. <laughs> It's time to see Blue Popo. Uh, and now a word for Mr. Popo. <laughs> <laughs> what? There's <laughs> a Tybin. Uh. You have a Tybin. Why not? Uh. It's good to. Uh. Almost got the nose, everybody. Uh. Other questions, uh, comments, uh. I think it depends on the director. Oh my gosh, it was in the middle of that. A new conversation and Mike. Question four. I'm the, I just went through a workshop for voiceovers and I was just wondering how you break into anime. I mean, did you go through auditions or did you just email your your voice to everybody in the world? Or how did you oh, good it? question. Do you I think we all slept with Mike McFarland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, think, I think that's how we. <laughs> I was gonna say, this isn't YouTubeable, is it? <laughs> yeah. You're not willing to do that. <laughs> so you're a go-getter, are you? She's a real goer. A real goer. All around her. How do we break into the biz nasty? Um, <laughs> Well, I will say that um, I got really lucky because it's a lot harder now than when I did it because, uh, I mean, my, to keep it brief, my, actually... Spike Spencer? No, Spike wasn't a... Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. There he is. Really well talking here. <laughs> uh, really fast. So, I was an uh, actor in Dallas, and I had a friend, and the friend said, you know, we both had agents, and we, uh, we do plays and all kinds of stuff, and my friend said, hey, why don't you audition for this... Uh, Place. Literally, what he specifically said was, they're doing cartoons in Fort Worth, you should audition. I said, I like cartoons. So I go to an audition in a bank building in this darkened room, and I thought I was going to be possibly killed. And instead, um, I left. I said, okay, cool. I left, didn't think anything about it, and uh, went home and had some lunch. And then a couple of weeks later, I got a call that uh, I to come back, and I got a couple of characters. And at that time, the show turned out to be DBZ, and it was uh, Chen, Chen Han and Mr. Popo. And the guy, the friend of mine, who said, hey, you should audition, he uh, got some characters too, and that was actually Mike McFarland. So it was Mike. We have not uh, done that. We haven't gone all the way. <laughs> yeah. And then you had lunch. <laughs> oh, always lunch. Always had lunch. But uh, so that's just how it happened for me. I mean, literally, I was an actor, right place, right time. I was an actor, and, and I was an actor in Dallas, and Funimation happened to open in my backyard. So that's really how it happened. So it was just a lucky deal. Um, but uh, you know, as long as you're prepared for when the time comes, then you know it'll, it'll happen. But that's how it happened for me. Yeah, I think for most of us, like I know Spike and I were both actors. We were both at the University of Houston, and like it just kind of happened. Um, I think now, unfortunately, you guys are at a huge disservice because the anime industry is in pain. Like it is bleeding, dying on the floor. And as a result, people aren't having auditions. Like they're not casting any new people because they barely have enough shows to keep us working regularly. So unfortunately, that's kind of a problem. So what I always tell people is don't pigeonhole yourself. Like as much as you love anime, like love being a voice actor, like want to be a voice actor. Uh, I can go and do a commercial recording and make more in three hours than I make for 26 episodes of anime. Screaming. Yeah, screaming and, and hurting possibly my. passing out. So I mean, like that's the thing is like, go for your dreams. I'm certainly not gonna tell anybody not to go for your dream, but don't pigeonhole yourself into that one little because it's such a small little niche in the giant world of voice acting. Um, we can always do the Homer Simpson thing. Never try. <laughs> um, actually, and, and in I'm in LA now, so it's a, kind of a different animal because in Dallas you've got Funimation and that's about it, uh, and you've got radio, TV, etc. But fortunately, out in uh, LA, there's some uh, video games that are happening. So that's kind of where you want to transition yourself to because that seems to be the next thing that's happening. I just did uh, one 
I don't know if I can say it or not, so I'll do it tonight when no cameras are on me. <laughs> uh, but it was awesome. And it's great because, you know, the video games, um, they get a lot of exposure. And there's even video game awards now and stuff. And, of course, they're all the stars that you see on the Grammys and the Emmys and the, you know, Academy Awards. You're like, wait a minute. Don't you guys have enough? Uh, but uh, so there's a, there's a lot of other things, like she said. There's a lot of other things to do as far as voice work goes, and you do get pigeonholed uh, in anime in L.A. They they oh the anime guy. It's kind of a dirty word. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, I'm like no, I'm I'm an actor. So what do you do? I, I do some voiceovers. Well, oh, you're a voice guy. No, I'm an actor. I I do everything. But what are you doing mostly? Well, I do some uh, video games and, and oh, you're a video game guy. No, I'm an actor. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Don't put Spike in a box. And that's my agent. <laughs> Well, Shinji didn't help you in that regard. Yeah, he did. <laughs> it just kind of sucks because, like, you know, we kind of look down it. upon for being anime voice actors, which is stupid because it's harder it's than hard. any prelay or video game stuff I've ever done because you have to, like, match flaps and have good timing and all that. It's really technical and difficult. Yeah. But for some reason, when you go to L.A. or you go out there, it's like, oh, you do anime. Yeah. And anybody who knows, it is the hardest uh, voiceover job there is. Yeah. It really is, and you get paid the least. Yeah. You know, and there's not that respect. And although Samuel L. Jackson did anime, and that was, and that was okay. Clint Eastwood was supposed to be doing one or something sometime soon. So, I mean, it's it's still out there. Uh, but yeah, it's a weird thing, especially in L.A. Like, they just want to pigeonhole you as fast as they can, just so they can label you. It's weird. Well, it's like the only anime... I'm sorry, only... look, look at him. Oh, He's had to stand up for a while. Um, actually, just regarding what you said with Samuel L. Jackson, um, how do the three of you feel in regards to... I mean, since this is your normal career the majority of Don't pigeonhole us. <laughs> I mean, voice, or specifically voices, how do you feel when like, big time actors come in, like when um, Studio Ghibli pulls in a lot of uh, uh, normal actors, or a lot of like, TV show actors? For you just called us abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's cool. It's cool. Whatever. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't do it. <laughs> You'd see him at his age with a bell. Not being abnormal? Uh, <laughs> Everybody wants uh, to You didn't even let me pick you. That's <laughs> He's like, you're abnormal, we know it. <laughs> no, I, don't, I would never deny that. You're absolutely right. Uh, I hate it. I think it's terrible. Because guess what? Uh, Brad Pitt, arguably beautiful to look at. I'm sure some of you would agree with that. Uh, but not necessarily a voice guy. In fact, a lot of these uh, so-called voice actors who are famous for doing film, they have mush mouths, or they're not used to doing it, or they're not really... They're, they're, they're using, they're attaching the project to a name so that they can get the project made very often. Or, and they know what'll bring in people to, to the theater. But it's, it, it, it's uh, not cool. You know, I don't like it. Not and like scene. Them. They're I'm bad. Happy about it. Most of them. I mean, there's some of them that were good, especially like in the, in the anime stuff. Like you get the Miyazaki films and stuff, and then you can really see. Because like on the Disney stuff, they actually do all the prelay. Like they go in there and record and they are acting out and then that video is used in the actual animation. So they don't have to work that hard. They're basically just acting as the animators that are making it look like, oh. But when you look at the Miyazaki stuff that's dubbed by some of the bigger names, then you see the truth because then they're doing what we're doing and it's not those so rooms. Yeah. And you see- Yeah, we're better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Suck it, Hollywood. Take that, Dawson. <laughs> Yeah, he's in line. Vanderbeek? Yeah. Dawson's Vanderbeek, yes? Continuing on with this, have you seen any difference in this, the, the pay, the amount of pay or the pay scale? What's that? <laughs> Between... Pay, pay, pay. Money, me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Big stuff. What? Because A bigger bunch. Do you see any difference in how much the people are paid, if they're in one of these movies with a big name, you know, actor, somebody everybody's going to know, and as a result, you're going to get five, six, seven times the number of people in the theater because of that, does that bump the lower salaries up a little bit? It's usually a union job. If it's a union job, you're going to get paid union wages, which is going to be better. So, yeah. Because most of the stuff that we do is not. Yeah. And even if it is... Oddly enough, uh, the non-union pay is usually better than the union pay and what we do. <laughs> like, well, the union says you get this much job, but if I go over here, I get twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> or there's more of it. <laughs> I know where I'm going. I like 
food. You're blind cleanser <laughs> for those jobs. I'm blind cleanser. <laughs> Actually, you want to get in trouble with units. I'm, I'm by core. Oh. I go both ways. <laughs> Fabulous. And we're from, we're still in Dallas, so we don't have to do with yeah. the union. Yeah. Actually, it's look up Thong right Flossman. That's a, a pseudonym. Yeah. Thong Flossman. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hentai. Nice. Thong Flossman. Yeah, exactly. yeah, usually the companies that can bring in the big names are like Disney, and then they're gonna pay you more for these old names, just because they have money coming out of their ears. Yeah. 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 That was a PG thirteen. I liked that little quiet. <laughs> Special. <laughs> yes, in the back. Uh, I have a question for Monica. Yes. Um, when um, I think it was in the third episode of Oran when um, obviously you were. Rangay, you were yelling all that stuff in the background. Do you have any idea what it is that you actually said? Off the top of my head, no. Um, but I do remember being insane for that entire show. Um, that was one of the shows that I was lucky I got to do the scripts for. I adapted that one from the translation. So that, for me, was awesome because I got to see her while I was writing. And I absolutely fell in love with her in that first episode, so then I just kind of wrote it to how it would sound good if I said it. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> I did have an advantage, so then when I went into audition for Caitlin, and she's like, well, who do you want to audition for? And I'm like, <laughs> and then I did it, and I did the whole laugh and everything, and she's like, oh my gosh, it's like you know her. I'm like, oh. <laughs> wonder how that happened. <laughs> did I tell you I wrote it? I wonder. But yeah, I love her. She's much better. Oh my god, I've done the same thing. <laughs> oh no! Why don't you just blurt it out? Me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I know what you were saying. Which you were ranting and raving about how Kyoya looks like your favorite uh, video game character. That's right, the guy in the video game. How much I loved the guy in the video game and Kyoya and Tim's big old jerk. I still love that I put a joke in there, and it's actually from the translation, but I kind of put a joke in there for the twins about pictures and catchers. <laughs> but I remember reading on the internet, like this whole forum where they're like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, why did, who put that in there? That's so stupid. And I'm like, if you don't understand what it means, then you don't get the joke. <laughs> Sorry. I'll elaborate <laughs> my panel. I, <laughs> it's like, I gotta go to this panel. It's gonna be everything you can do. You must see my <laughs> It's a must see. Uh, gloves. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, this is for Monica. Yes. As Renge, what do you think of Umahito and Oren? <laughs> Over there. <laughs> oh, she's uh, I'm still not awake, you guys. I'm still trying to wake up. What's going on? I absolutely love that show, and I love the whole thing about it. Like every every single aspect of it. And I was so happy to actually be able to work on it, and then to actually be cast in it. It's a pretty funny show. I like it. I like it. Oh, she likes it. <laughs> she likes it, and Mr. Bobo likes it. Yeah, always, right? Uh, uh, yes. Topic. There's been a lot of turnover in companies and production in anime recently, and I was wondering how that has affected you and voice actors in general, especially when some of you have worked for the same company for a very long period of time that no longer exists. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> the um, crying is more intense these days. <laughs> Girl living a ball. I'm not gonna be a downer, but um, I worked for a company in Houston called ADB Films that did very well. And then they actually had problems, and I had to pick up and move to Dallas in a week. Yeah, sucks. And I would go and work in Dallas and couch surf and go home on the weekends and pack my apartment in Houston and drive back. So having been hit by this, I will say this. I'm not going to tell you what to do. However, oh my God. <laughs> if you I'm download okay. anime, and you don't buy that disc, I'm gonna send my moving bills your way. <laughs> you are dead to Because, I mean, like, well, I mean, the thing is that the industry really is hurting you guys. Like, I'm not being a downer here. Like, we're, we're in pain. Like, I'm making less money than I made when I started in the industry. 
industry. I'm chafing right now. <laughs> yes, so it's I, like, I, I hear my wallet crying. Right? Here. So <laughs> it's, what is that? it's rough right now, and it sucks for you guys, these people that want to be voice actors, like the opportunities aren't there, and the shows that you want to, to be, you know, licensed, or to be, to come over, you know, nobody can afford them anymore, because none of the companies have money, the Japanese companies are suffering, like everybody is kind of in a bad place, so. Yeah. But I mean, it's... It, Funimation's still kicking, LA is still kicking, like places are still going. Um, ADV isn't ADV anymore, but they have like seven different other names. And while they're not doing as much as they used to, they're still going. It's just that what used to be this like high powered, like fast industry constantly working is now like, yeah, like, su like Subway. I went from like, you know, being a, a movie star to a sandwich maker and it's like, a sandwich artist. A sandwich artist. Right. <laughs> five dollars in February. We've slowed down. We went from five star to McDonald's. But it's good. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, that's for. Ah, do you want fries with that? <laughs> yeah, we're still screaming, but just for different reasons. Um, yeah, it, it very much. <laughs> I mean, illegal download drugs are terrible, and uh, you know they happen with the music industry too. But unlike the music industry, if someone downloads illegally a song, well, I mean it's still bad, but the, the band can tour and sometimes make up that money. That's how they make most of the money. Right. Yeah, but of course we, you can't exactly tour a show, you know. So there is no other the way screaming to, tour. Yeah. Let's go. So there is no other way to, to put the money back in the industry. So I, I've said before earlier, uh, or a few months ago, I said this is a great time to be. Um, an anime fan because there's so many ways to to access uh, things you enjoy, but it's not so it's a great time to be a fan Not so good to be in the industry right now. <laughs> so it's a little different. So yeah, because they're trying to get stuff out faster So people won't download like I know Funimation's doing a whole bunch of these simultaneous stuff where like as soon as they sign that paperwork like it's up <laughs> On you know on the internet so you can you can watch it. One day we're just gonna record two picture live. Yes. And it comes out of Japan. Please. Sweat beats. Other questions, comments, which are here. Yes. Um, you mentioned about how it was like harder to get into the anime dubbing industry of the voice acting. I'm just wondering, uh, is that the same? Would it therefore be possibly easier or preferable to try to just go into like the Western cartoons then of voice actor there? Yes, that's even harder. I've heard Actually. that they like they don't like they don't bring anybody in until somebody else dies. Is that it's weird? very <laughs> difficult. Oh I, I'm in LA and that's where they do it and it is let me tell you, it is a big, big business, a very small community, and uh, it's hard to break in. I've been trying for five years and uh, it's it's difficult. It is I haven't done a single one yet. So there you go. <laughs> I know a lot of people that have. <laughs> They're not letting me in yet. <laughs> but video games and stuff are recorded like all over the nation. Like even small towns you wouldn't think have places that are recording video games. And um, and even just voice acting, like just being the dude that's on the radio going, hey, ride the bus down to Best Buy today. I mean like, they need those people. Who's that guy? I don't know, but he <laughs> makes a lot of money. Hey, <laughs> so, ride the yeah, bus so to like, Best Buy, y'all. The five dollar. <laughs> The five, um, yeah, five, five dollar, yeah, they've got, those guys make a lot of money. Yeah, that song burrows into your head and won't let go. Yeah. But that guy's getting money. Uh, other questions or comments about Subway or other food? Yes? <laughs> I have a question about Subway. I think it would be interesting to know how did you like, introduce your family to this? Like, watch this, I'm so proud of this version of Subway. Like, how did you see what I do? I'm the one with the new hair, or I'm the one in the bikini. Well, I showed them my hentai first. <laughs> <laughs> the rest was easy. <laughs> Not sliding. <laughs> how did you? How did we introduce our family to? I've been talking to my food since I was a baby, so my parents are like, "Yeah, <laughs> of course you are, honey. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Go do your thing." <laughs> That's an interesting question. Meaning I don't know the answer right away. <laughs> yeah, I was going to pontificate for a moment, <laughs> Monica. <laughs> Anytime anyone ever says, by the way, that's a good question. That means I don't know. <laughs> that's what they mean, but you have one. Um, and thank you for asking that question, by the way. It I, is a good question. Nobody's ever asked that. But us. My my mom, I mean she I talked to her the whole time. I was like, I'm doing this thing. And my brother was a huge anime fan, so he was all about it, so oh, they were cool. cool. Yeah. But uh, my dad is like from Spain. And when I say from Spain, I mean like from Spain. Like he moved to America only to be with my mother. Like he's newly American. Uh, and then for, therefore, 
and therefore very old world and old school. So when I tried to explain to him what I was doing, uh, he was not into it. Uh, he was furious that I got like a theater degree at the University of Houston. He was not happy until I also got my cosmetology license because everybody always needs a haircut. <laughs> I was like, all right, okay, I got a degree, and you're excited about my life. So you could have been a mortician and with that been project. Yeah, yeah you would okay. have been happy. But he didn't get any of it until I was cast as Hello Kitty. And he knew what Hello Kitty was, and he was like, you are set for life, you are Hello Kitty. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's not how it works. No, every time they make a toaster, or they, they put a toaster, you can have it, right? I was like, no. 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 <laughs> I wish. Yeah. <laughs> no. That is not how it works. <laughs> but he's still like, that's the only thing. He doesn't say she does anime. She's like, she's Hello Kitty. She's Hello Kitty. She's Hello Kitty. That's funny. <laughs> My dad does. She's the Kitty. She also doubles as an Italian, but it's also. <laughs> it's funny because he looks like a mix of, um, of Dudley Moore and Al Pacino. And nice. he talks like Dudley Al Pacino Pacino. kind of in Scarface. It's kind of love them. I love it. Like, like, like. First you get the money. Uh, <laughs> my, my, uh, my parents were cool with it. They, they kind of regarded it as just, um, I mean, for me, it was just another acting thing. I mean, they're supportive, but they don't, you know, throw flower petals when I walk in the room. Not that anyone does. Uh, although my dad was uh, talking to a friend of his, you know, and, and he said, Chris is here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, finally. And, I'm, and I come in with this huge egg. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, he, my dad's friend said, do you know what, they call me Christopher at home, it's the only time they ever do, uh, uh, and, and he said, do you know what uh, Christopher's up to? Said, Your kid's famous. I was like, I don't think so. And, and he said, what do you mean? And so he, he showed, my dad's friend showed him some websites and some stuff that I did, because, you know, I don't really trouble them with, <laughs> you know, and he was like, wow, that's really cool. So it. I, I guess my story is it took my dad's friend. <laughs> like, this is terrible. Apparently, my parents are not supportive at all. But um, no, they're, they're. I've been doing it for a long time, and they've always been very supportive. In fact, one time, uh, I remember I was watching. We were working on Case Closed. It was the second time I mentioned that show, because there was a huge turnover. Like they had to get it out to the Cartoon Network fast. I remember that's back in the days of it churning it up. And I remember working on it, directing it. Um, and then two or three weeks later, maybe four at the most, I remember sitting on my couch and, and watching what we had just done, and it was really surreal. And I remember being over at their, at my mom and dad's place and uh, flipping the channels, and I was like, wow, I just did that. I was like, really? That's pretty cool. So that was kind of, I guess maybe TV made it real for them, yeah. you know, so, yeah. And that's how I saved Christmas. I have no <laughs> ending to that story. <laughs> Uh, we have like five minutes tops. Are we going to do other refs here in this room? Oh, yes. We can pretty much just keep on going then. Uh, <laughs> this is, it'll take us, what, 15 minutes or so to do other So we're just going to keep talking for a while. You with the head. Uh, how often do you guys find yourself just in normal, everyday conversations accidentally switching between different characters that you've done before? Minute by minute, man. <laughs> It's like Aladdin in here. It's great. <laughs> exactly. It's like Aladdin in here. Yeah. We do we do it all the time. Oh, 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 oh. Say Chris. See? Yeah, there's your answer. I think in, in real life I try to my voice is so weird in real life. I try to avoid anything other than this so people can just acclimate to this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna throw too many things at him at one time. I just take it up. So the most palatable voice, and then you work your way to ridiculous. Right. Although the most ridiculous voice was the one we heard last night. That waitress over there. Did you hear that? I thought my voice what? was bad. No. She's like, would you like this? And, that, that. I was like, <laughs> and ear blood everywhere. <laughs> would you want some more lasagna? You want some cheese on that? <laughs> you bet I do here. <laughs> yes. Oh God. You know how some animes, they have characters who they wear the exact same outfit every day, constantly? Um, if the ruler yes. was, was like that, what would it's your outfit be? All three of you guys. This is it! <laughs> like, you, see, you should see my badge. Let's see. Literally, this is what I had on last night. Like, look at that! Like, I'm practically wearing the same hat, the same shirt! So, uh, that's my, my uniform has been uh, painfully exposed. So, uh, I'd say practically this. 
I don't know. My uniform would definitely include jeans and boots. Uh, I'm wearing my uniform. This is literally, this is it. I got my jeans, my boots, and jacket, and stains. <laughs> For all of the world. It's <laughs> Jimmy Jones. That's uh, lasagna. Australia. That's uh, New Zealand. Stamp his jeans at Lama. What the? Emu. There. Herman. Yes, sir. Chris Kaysen. <laughs> That's gross. Oh boy. Uh oh. I realize that a lot of what you do is based on the director and the voice director and whoever. And, you know, they're giving you hints and, you know, clues and things like that. But when you're in that little box, you're obviously, you don't have a lot of room for movement. But how do you come up with a character who's who's running or who's very active? And let's say you have a character who has like a magic wand. Do you like take a pencil in to <laughs> swing it around to you know kind of get yourselves into the the idea of what they're doing? Voice acting is uh, there's another voice actor that I know. Uh, his name sounds like Bunny Blake. Oh, it's Sunny Straight. And he was, he was talking about how it's, it's very, uh, it's almost zen-like. Like the idea that when you're voice acting, you're doing, you're simulating the sound of movement and doing all these things just with this. And there's not, like from the waist down, there's not a lot going on. Uh, it's, it's almost like puppetry in a way. That you're putting uh, the entire thing to life right here. He said it's kind of like that, so you have to learn to do that. Although, you can also move around. We do move around quite a bit. I mean, there's enough movement, the even even in the smallest booth in the old days I was talking about before, where it's no bigger than an old phone booth. You still have enough movement to kind of uh, to simulate that, or, or running in place, or whatever it is that you have to do. But um, um, and of course, as a director for seven years, I've seen a lot of. Well, that's where the funny stories come in too. But I, I've seen a lot of you know arm swinging, and I've seen a lot of people who they have to be underwater taking a drink and gurgling and talking through the water, and, uh, uh, or eating when they have to eat, they actually go to the break room and bring out like a, a Duncan stick and putting half of it in their mouth, which is delicious, by the way. It's very tasty. Yeah, it's always back to food somehow with me. But, um, so yeah, that, that does happen quite a lot. Well, I do, I do a lot of movements. Uh, like, uh, for example, Ginta uh, in Mare. Uh, I'm fighting Bobo and stuff. I'm in the booth, I'm like, oh, Bobo, I got you, I'm, I'm moving around like that, but I'm keeping my mouth here. And I'm moving around because I try to mimic whatever the char character is doing. If it's, for example, if you can hear my voice as it changes as I pull my arm back, it's stretching a little bit on my vocal cords and it comes back here. So if somebody's stretching back to hit, I'm stretching back to hit. So I'm doing as much as I can, but a lot of times you can't. So for example, when we're running, we're basically hyperventilating for you. <laughs> so, 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 and, that's, and that's how a lot of people pass out. <laughs> But yeah, I do, I do a lot of movement too, but what I find more than anything is that especially when you are confined, it's the, it's the face, so like, um, like I'm sure these guys, it used to be we had these little whisper rooms where there was one little window over here so you could kind of hide so nobody saw how ridiculous you were looking, but now in an ADV, like it's a huge window and you're just there, like it's closer than you guys are to me now, and you have to, to do your thing and you cannot be afraid to look like an idiot. Because, I mean, sometimes you have to contort, you have to do all kinds of crazy things, and you're moving around, and you just look ridiculous. There's, there's no way around it. No. Yeah. But of course, we're used to it. All yeah. inhibition's gone. Yeah. Burr. It's out. That's kind of the funny part. So, and the other thing that's so great about voice acting, of course, you can show up in, you know, sweatpants and a Tasmanian Devil t-shirt, like, whatever you want to wear is the point. Flip-flops. And of course, so then you have some Pantsless. <laughs> Elastic bands. Elastic bands. Only. Uh, so of course, so then you have people, <laughs> you have people making all these contorted faces and in <laughs> weird clothes and yeah, it's, it's kind of nuts. But that's the really fun part about, about what we do. Just like that's the, plastic bags. just plastic bags. Like that's the good news. It's very freeing and it's very fun. So, it's yes? It's very freeing. Um, you, you have so many characters. How do you develop each voice? I mean, without all your voices kind of sounding alike after a while? Uh, well, I, you know, there's been some talk about that before, like online, about uh, different voice actors where if they, if they do a character that's even remotely close to their speaking voice, as most of them are, you know, at different levels, that they've been, you know, accused, some people have been accused of sounding the same in everything. Although, Don't frankly, me. <laughs> although, 
frankly, if you listen to the original Japanese tracks, I mean, there are arch in anime specifically, not in other things, but there are archetypes. Like, you have the hero, the villain. Uh, like, for example, an anime rule would be, if there's a guy with no shirt, huge muscles, and he's 6'4", he will have a low voice. Like, just no question, almost no question. Uh, and, and, and I so, will probably never play it. <laughs> <laughs> so these things just, these things just happen. Uh, so sometimes you do get kind of locked in vocally to think, but I mean, I've said it before, you have two choices really, particularly in anime. Either you do a bunch of different voices that are very different, or you specialize in one kind of voice that's used all the time. And that way you're working either way. Um, but to try to make them different, that's the part I love about anime. Like for example, on stage, on film, I will never be a 30-foot dragon, ever. But in anime, I can, you know? So that's like the really fun part, so. Yeah, it's like me playing, um, I get accused of on the internet a lot. A lot of people don't believe this is my real voice. They think I'm actually, I sound like a 30 some odd year old woman and I just pretend to use this voice. But this is why I'm cast as all those little girls. It's because I'm super little girl. Um, for me though, because I do get pigeonholed like that, like I do get that role a lot. Uh, it's about finding ways to make this little girl different than that little girl. Like what is it about this person's personality that's different from this one? Does this one have a lisp? Does this one, you know, over enunciate her words? Is this one more nasally? Is this one more throaty? Is this like you have to like pick and, and, and mold it, and hopefully this one doesn't sound just like that one. And they're always going to be a little similar because it's you, and you can't can't really hide you. Right. It's hard. You know? We'll discuss some of this at my panel. How to be a freaking genius voice actor? Step one, which will be happening later on. Yeah, we better start signing some stuff. You think so? I mean, but we'll be around. For another hour. We'll be around all weekend too, you guys, and we've got panels. Yeah. When is our panel? Um, I didn't bring my binder. I have a, <laughs> I'm a bad I don't even have a binder. You should. I should have a binder. The answer um, is I have a we'll panel tonight uh, at 9, I believe. Uh, what happens at the con stays at the con. Mm -hmm. Stories from the seamy underbelly of anime conventions and more, volume 1. It's 16 and up. <laughs> it's like 11, 45. It could be fun. <laughs> And then, and then we have some tomorrow, and we'll be at opening ceremony. You'll see us around. <laughs> but um, how did you want to? How did you guys want to work this? Do you want to do like one row at a time? Or?